we know an elevated resting heart rate is usually, not unequivocally, associated with some long-term problematic outcomes. On the other hand, usually a resting heart rate is considered good and reduced mortality. Now, with the issue we're talking about today from the August 16th issue of Jack, it's a review topic of the week, and it's when increases in central blood pressure override the benefits of heart rate lowering. To do this, one of the uh, great experts in the field, Dr. Franz Messerly, who is from the University Hospital of Bern. First off, thank you. It is always an honor to talk to you. This was a great topic because it's a, an issue that I wasn't really had that aware of. But boy, you've got some interesting stuff here. Why did you want to do this paper to begin with? Why is this a big, important issue? Well, actually, thanks for inviting me, Rick. I'm delighted to be here. Actually, you know, the topic is fascinating because there's a general consensus in the cardiology community that a low heart rate is good. And this is supported by Framingham cohort data. Um, other cohorts have shown exactly the same. The lower your heart rate is, up to a point of course, the longer you live. There is a J-shaped relationship if you go below 40 and so on. Needless to say, then uh, you're dealing with six sinus syndrome and so on. That's not necessarily good. But when you go from 70 to 60, you can calculate that if you persist on a 60 heart rate, that you prolong your life expectancy by about 13 years. Theoretically. Okay. So we thought that this is fascinating. And indeed, the question then comes up, can pharmacologic heart rate reduction prolong life expectancy? Because it's easier to take a pill than to run every day or jog and right. get an athlete's heart and so on. We know all that. And when you ask about pharmacologic heart rate reduction, what comes to mind immediately are the old Kiexus data from about 25, 30 years ago showing post-MI. When you give a beta blocker, indeed, you reduce heart rate and you reduce the reinfarction rate and mortality. And the same holds too, most recently shown in congestive heart failure, the uh, SWIFT study, Carl Svetberg was the principal investigator, so we can state, oh yeah, when you're in heart failure and coronary artery disease, when you lower heart rate, you have a positive effect. Now, Shrippal Bangalore and myself looked at this and asked, what about hypertension? Because we would like to do hypertension. So we did a meta-analysis published in JAG about, let's say about four years ago, five years ago or so, very thorough, well done, and surprisingly showing the slower the heart rate in hypertension with the beta blocker, the greater the mortality. The slower the heart rate, the more MI. The slower the heart rate, more congestive heart rate. So quite in contrast of what was shown in post-MI patients, in heart failure patients, in hypertension, beta blocker induced slowing of heart rate, increases morbidity and mortality. And that caused a little storm in the teapot, <laughs> not yes, surprisingly, it because it, it goes the wrong way. And yeah. pe people didn't really believe it. So it so happened at the same time, Brian Williams did the CAFE study. The CAFE study is a sub-study of the ASCOT study. And they looked at central blood pressure um, comparing a tenolol with a blodipine. Now, tenolol is a beta blocker, it slows heart rate. And surprise, surprise, peripheral blood pressure, measured with the cuff, was exactly the same for a tenolol and a blodipine. Both of them lowered it to the same extent. But when they looked at central aortic blood pressure, there was a 4.3 millimeter difference in favor of a blodipine. In other words, a tenolol had a pseudo-antihypertensive effect. They used the term pseudo-antihypertensive effect. Peripheral blood pressure looks good. Physician and patients are, hap are happy. Yet central blood pressure in the aorta is distinctly higher. It's not really lowered very much. So the same mechanism seems to play in hypertension. You actually, if anything, increase blood pressure some, the central blood pressure some, when you use a beta block. And then came the whole Ivabradin 
story. Yeah, As you know, sure. we have two thorough, prospective, randomized trial in patients with coronary artery disease. The uh, beautiful was the first one, and the second was the Signify. Both of them showing no benefit with ivaprati, despite the fact that heart rate was lowered very substantially. And of course, that was very disappointing for the primary investigators of, of uh, these two trials. But we then measured in Bern, we measured central blood pressure with ivaprati in the double-blind, randomized controlled study, small study, about 44 patients or so, but again, clearly showing that central blood pressure does go up by about 12 millimeters systolic blood pressure. And of course, an increase of 12 millimeters systolic blood pressure will abolish all benefits that heart rate lower it can have. So that's where the title of the paper is coming from. You know, that increase in central blood pressure because of heart rate lowering can override the benefits that you would associate it with this heart rate lowering. So what's the clinical message? What can we do about it now that we know more? I think the one of the clinical messages is that heart rate reduction by pharmacological agents is not necessarily beneficial. Uh, beneficial. Be careful what you wish for. Look at the data carefully. And I think one consideration here is that you know heart rate reduction with beta blockers is recommended by all guidelines in patients with aortic dissection because they say it reduces shear forces. It may well do that, but it may increase central pressure. We have no outcome data in aortic dissection. So I have a little question mark there whether indeed beta blockers are the drug of choice as they are recommended by the guidelines. And we are working on that issue right now. So maybe in a few years, we will have some data on, on this. When would you use a pharmacological therapy at this point? And you'd feel comfortable doing it? I still feel very comfortable to use heart rate lowering drugs in congestive heart failure. Because blood pressure is low, often too low. So if you have an agent that at the same time reduces heart rate, but brings blood pressure up a little bit, it can be very beneficial for the patient. And I think in selective patients post-MI, heart rate reduction may also be beneficial, but just be careful if the patient already has a blood pressure that's, that's at the upper limit of normal. So. Well, I do suggest that people go look at this because it's, it's a really good review topic of the week. We've got some great ones in check, and this one is in the August 16th issue, and it is by uh, Messerly and colleagues. Please check that out for Cardio Source World News. I'm executive editor Rick McGuire.